So we've got a Game Gear here that's been sent in and a video wants to be made on it. Uh, we can see from this, customers tried to recap it. The contrast wheel seems to work. Uh, basically, by the sounds of it, it doesn't load games. So I'm going to go ahead and start with just the board. So I've just got the board here. Um, I'm going to use a known working clean amp and a known working clean juice and a known working copy of Sonic. I always like to start with this so that we can at least identify whether the issue is in the main board and not everything else. So let's just connect up the clean juice and the clean amp. And then just remember when these were original screens uh, around this area here, there's like 120 volts plus, like 400 volts if it's not loaded down. It gives you quite a belt if you touch it when you've got the L2 inductor still installed, so just watch out for that. Uh, connect all that. And let's just try and turn on. And we, can, and we can see we've got the red light boot, so we know we're booting. We're getting this rather annoying buzz, which is usually when data fails to load. There's like partial data loading. So it's normally a sign that either the work RAM uh, is bad. It's rarely the ASIC or the MPUs when this issue happens. But there's obviously an issue. So we'll disconnect the amp. We will simply remove the game. And let's just crack out the oscilloscope. So if I just pull up the oscilloscope on screen. And I'm just going to set this to... 10 times probe, 10 volts, uh, 10 microsecond division. I'm going to set a trigger for 1 volt peaks and 10% where the trigger starts. So now that's set up. If I just touch the scope, you can see it's working. We just want to get a ground wire so it's easy to probe. So I'll just take some Kynar wire. Let's move this out of the way a second. And just strip the ends of the wire so we can attach the ground connector. And let's just tack the ground wire onto a presumably working ground pad. Grab the ground part of the probe lead and now we should have a grounded probe and we can start probing away so we turn on first thing to do let's check we have five volts so you can see on the alto inductor we have five volts uh, now we want to really probe all of the pins so the ram the mpu the cartridge connector the asic i always start with the cartridge connector Leave the first pin because that's 34 volts. Next one should be 5 volts. And then as we go down, you can see good data here. And if I move the mouse to the line there, you can see that's the 5 volt line. That's where we want the um, good signals to be. I'm just going to move down the pins. And we're really looking for um, some corrupt pins. So usually uh, sort of 1 or 2 volt pins or less with data on that loops corrupt. I've done quite a few videos on these kind of uh, issues, so I'm sure we'll likely discover one. Now, you see how that shows less, but you get the pulses of 5 volts that appear now and then. That's how this data line looks, so that's normal. The fact that you can actually see it rise to 5 volts. So as you work with Game Gears, you get used to what the signals look like when they're healthy versus when they're no good. Those three are ground pins, then we move back to data again. Or address whichever but I don't really need to look up what these pins are because I've done this enough and I kind of know what to expect and when we see an issue I'll let you know so far all of these look good so these are all healthy signals basically 5 volt signals that pulse with data so this is exactly what we'd expect to see And then after this, these pins don't matter for game boot anyway. So they're all good. 
Let's move on to the RAM. They're all good. They're all good. So they're the two I'd normally do first. I tend to leave the A6 and the MPU to last because it's not often those. So next, let's just get a game. So I've got columns here and just remove the back off one of the games. Insert the game. Just turn the console off and on again. And now let's probe the game pins. And this would indicate a physically dirty or bad cartridge connector here. And there you go. That's a bad line there. So see how there's data on that line, but it's uh, it's like less than a volt. So that's a definite bad pin. Just check the vest so we know what we're dealing with. Oh, ground leads come off. Always make sure when you see an issue that you. Ground wire is still attached. Let's just reconfirm that pin that was bad. Yep, still bad. You can see that's a bad pin as well. So, like fourth pin down there. Another bad pin there. So you can see how easy it is to kind of see the bad pins versus the good ones. The good ones are fairly obvious and the bad ones are also... Just as obvious that they're bad. So we've got, I think, three bad pins. I think it's that one. Yep. And then one up here. That one. And I think there was one more. That one. So there's like three bad pins on this cartridge. So that's a fairly easy fix if that all is all we're dealing with. Just unplug that. All we'll need for this is a file. So just a needle file or a diamond file will do. Take the game out, turn it up on its side, and basically pushing towards the cartridge connector, you want to just go up and down and give the pins a little file. This will clean any residue off that simply IPA won't do by putting a cartridge in up and down. And this happens fairly often, hence the reason I'm making new cartridge connectors, because we are seeing this fairly common now. Not very, you know, it's not every problem, but it certainly happens enough time that it's worth making a cartridge connector for. So now we've cleaned them pins, um, we can scope them to see if they're fixed. But we might even... I'll leave the audio off so we don't hear if it's fixed. Let's just see now. In fact, we don't need the game in to test if they're fixed, do we? We need this game in. Turn on. And I think it was around here. And you can see that's still bad, that pin. See if the other pins are still bad. So that pin now is getting nothing. Or is this uh, shorted out? Let's just check these again. Yep, so that isn't fixed. And that isn't fixed. So we still have the issue of these pins. So if simply scraping them with the file doesn't work, we can get tweezers down inside. And I've shown this on another video. But if we get tweezers inside, and you can hook the pins and bend them out. So if we look under the microscope here, you can see if you get tweezers in, and you just hook under the springs. You can see there's two rows of springs. So there's the ones at the top, which, for example, are here. And then the ones just below that go down further. So you want to just get them all and bend them up. Keep them in a straight line, but bend them out so they're making good contact. Because the other issue is they could be simply pushed too far in to the connector. And it's usually the bottom ones that they are no longer making good contact with uh, the game cartridge.
So now we can see the pins are much more pulled forward. And don't worry about them sticking out that far, because when we file them, that'll get pushed back in. So let's just get the file again, put some IPA on the file as well, and do the same thing. And then we'll do IPA again. And finally, let's see if we finally got the cartridge connector pins clean. And I think it was around here. So that's now, it's better. I don't think that's right still. You can see though, I think that was the pin. So we're getting there, because it should look like that. It should look like that one, but you can see we're getting sort of a... So you know, we've bend up, you can see it works. And I'll let go and it doesn't. So we are close there. To, in fact, if we held it there, we'd probably get the game to load. But it needs a bit more cleaning. Let's try the other one. That one's fixed. That one might not be any data on at the minute. Okay, so there's no dirty pins. We're just not getting the data there because it might be in that part of the game load. So I think now, bar cleaning... Whichever pin this is, which comes down to somewhere around here. Let's just see if we get Sonic loading. So let's just plug the amp back in. And we know we've probably got to hold the game up a little bit to get it to load. It's not quite fully clean. Let's just try and prove if this works. And there we go. So, so you can see we do have Sonic loading now. But... If we say remove this and just reinsert it without the bending, let's see if it loads. Yeah, so we've got a good load. I'm not 100% happy with that pin. Let me just uh, rescope this pin. Uh, I think it was that pin. Yeah, and we've got the got the data now. Yeah, so that's it. So this cartridge connector, once they get to this stage, I'd highly recommend uh, replacing them because they're obviously they're starting to wear out in there. They have dirt in them. There's not good contact for data. So as soon as I've got this new connector ready, which is in the middle of being made as a mold as we speak, so I will have these for sale soon, I'd recommend for this console specifically that we would remove this connector and replace it with a new one. I'll just take this uh, ground wire off and I can ship this back to the customer. And if they have any issues, they know now that this connector is on its way out in a sense. It's, it's good for now, but they can just continually file and pull out the pins and IPA to keep this as clean as possible for as long as possible. And then I'd recommend a cartridge connector swap once I have the new ones in stock. To clean the cartridge pins, which will also help, it's best to use a pencil eraser, so a dry eraser, uh, and just rub it up and down these pins to remove any of the residue. That will help with making better contact with these pins inside of here. We could also potentially soak this connector part in a warm white vinegar bath, and that will get rid of any kind of battery acid or corrosion. There's many tricks you can do to try and restore these, but ultimately I would definitely recommend a new connector when the time comes. So hopefully this has been useful, showing you a bit of the oscilloscope and repairs again, which I haven't done in a while. If you want me to repair your console, you can always just send it to me and leave a note inside to do a YouTube video on, and I'll happily repair your console, no problem. That's it for this one, and I'll catch you in the next.